Hello, my name's Ingrid. I'm an artist and illustrator and welcome to this art mini series called Fungi Fridays. In this series, we'll be exploring the wonderful world of fungi through the lens of art and more specifically with some watercolor paintings that I've created over the past, I think six months, it's been now. So these watercolors will then be turned into a 2023 wall calendar. I've been making wall calendars for a number of years now. Um, each year I choose a different nature-based theme, so things like Australian birds, endangered animals. Um, and it was actually my sister who suggested fungi last year when she came back from America. And it just seemed like a great theme because I feel like it's often overlooked and it's also a subject that I boy been interested in but didn't have a lot of knowledge about. So yeah this series will share with you what I've learnt during my painting endeavours and also show the process behind these artworks. At the end we should have a series of 12 watercolour and gouache paintings and hopefully a better understanding of fungi. Also just a quick disclaimer, I'm an illustrator so not an expert in the field of fungi. Um, so if you are a fungi expert and you notice if I make any mistakes or anything, please put a comment below to let me know so we can all learn together. I'll make an effort to include all my references and get my information correct. And of course if you've got any just general fun amazing facts about fungi then also please let us know in the comments. So to start with I thought we could quickly touch on what is fungi. Well, fungi are their own kingdom of eukaryotic organisms, encompassing some familiar terms I'm sure you'll know such as mushrooms, yeasts, toadstools and moulds. They play a vital role in nature as decomposers and recyclers. Fungi are found everywhere. Sometimes we see them and sometimes we don't. The word fungus actually refers to the entire organism, so that includes the mycelium, which is an almost root-like looking structure of the fungus made from something called hyphae, and usually this is the underground part that we don't see. And the fruiting body, or sporocarp, if it produces one. Often this is the part we do see if we see anything such as a mushroom. As I'm based in Australia, I've decided to focus on macro species that can be found here. It's also worth noting that in Australia, there's a long way to go with fungi research, so that's one of the reasons I wanted to make art around it. It's with the hope that it draws in more people to join the fungi learning journey, and also so we can support researchers and experts out there doing important work in the field of fungi. And it's of course also very important to recognise the knowledge held about Australian fungi, both culturally and scientifically, that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have. And before we go on, I would love to recommend a mini-series by Alison Puglio. Uh, she has made a series called The Forgotten Kingdom, and it's just a really good introduction to fungi. Um, so I highly recommend that, and we'll link it below. So our painting today is a bit of fun. It features Stropferia semi-globata, which I hope I'm saying right. Uh, it's a species that inhabits dung, usually a yellowish colour, has a long, thin stipe, browny, blackish gills, is slimy and has a hemispherical cap. It's more commonly known as a dung roundhead. I was pretty stoked to find out that it's been found growing on wombat poo, so of course an artwork idea was born. I love to show relationships between animals, plants and fungi in my artwork, so it seemed like a fun way to show the role of fungi as a decomposer. It's also good to have something familiar to a lot of people, like a wombat, to draw them in to learn more about other things in the paintings that they might not know as much about, like the dung roundhead mushrooms. I included the common wombat and the setting of the scene was inspired by areas of Cradle Mountain. There's also a lot of moss decomposing leaves and grasses in the background. I did include one wombat dropping, uh, but it could easily be mistaken for a rock as it kind of ended up blending in with the rest of the leaf litter and mossy rocks. I also had the challenge of trying to make the fungi feature enough in the composition of the artwork that they're an important part of it, but also fitting in an entire wombat, which they're obviously a lot bigger than the mushrooms. I always try to use a large range of reference photos so that I can avoid directly copying anyone's photography compositions. And something that was interesting was how different the yellowish tone of the dung roundhead was in each photo. In some photos it looked almost white and in others quite yellow. In 
In terms of the painting's composition, I wasn't actually originally planning to have it as a twilight scene, but as the artwork developed, I thought it needed some extra drama and contrast, so I added in a navy starry sky. Looking back at the footage, I think I could have filmed a bit more of when I was painting the actual mushrooms themselves. Uh, I have a bad habit of turning off the camera when I need to focus on getting a likeness a little bit camera shy. And so there we have it, the finished little piece with the twilight wombat and little dung round heads. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Funky Friday and I'll see you again next week with a new species. Bye!